You know, it's for me amazing how Christians can do things completely opposite to the Bible. Brother, take brother to court. What do you think is going to happen when you take your brother to court? What's going to happen to you? You say, but my brother deserves it. But the Bible says, a brother should not take a brother to court. But my brother is he's this and that and that and that. The Bible says, you shall not take your brother to court. If you take your brother to court, you do not know what will befall you and what will happen to you. You cannot take your brother to court. You will be cursed. Amen. You should help your brother in Jesus' name. You should tell him to repent. You should try to win him over. The Bible says you should not take a brother to court. You should come to church so the church leaders can judge. The church leaders got far more wisdom than any judge in this world because they got the wisdom of God. Amen? Say to your neighbor, a brother should not take another brother to court. They're speaking about Christian brother taking another Christian brother to court. It's also speaking about your own physical brother. You might have a brother that you will say, he's a devil. Don't take your brother to court. Amen? But go to the church authorities. And take him there and discuss it there and sort it out there. Don't take your brother to court. The Bible says that. Can we read that in the Bible, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 1. Mm. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? A judge that is not a Christian and not born again is unrighteous. That's it. That's what the Bible says. He's unrighteous. How can he be righteous? If he doesn't know Jesus, how can he be righteous? Go on. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the Stop world... there, thank you. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? You know on Judgment Day, who's going to judge the world? Huh? Do you think God's going to judge? No. The saints will judge the world. And the Bible says, the saints, me... And you, if, if you live right, will judge the fallen angels, will judge the devil. Amen. So if I one day is going to judge the devil and judge the world, do you think I cannot judge between matters between two Christian brothers? Okay, read that again. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, by you, you, are you a saint? That's why you should learn to judge righteously now. And you should learn how to live a holy life now. Because one day you're going to judge the world. Do you know that? You didn't know that, huh? I'm teaching you something. Now, the people who's going to judge the world one day take one another to the courts where there's an unrighteous judge who's not even a Christian. Are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? Who's least in esteemed by the church? Judges who's not Christians. What do they know about right and wrong? Are they born again? Are they Christians? What do they know? They might study law, but they do not have no wisdom of God. So you take a brother to the earthly courts to be judged by a man that doesn't even know God? Yes, I are. say this to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you, not even one, who will be able to judge between his brethren? But brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. Now therefore it is already an utter failure for you <laughs> that you go to law against one another, why do you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourself be cheated? 
Why don't you rather accept wrong? Why don't you rather accept to be cheated? Because then you're a Christian. You've got a hand on me. What does the Bible say if you hit me on the one side? What must I do? Huh? Take it to court. No, I must turn the other cheek as well. But the Bible says nothing if you hit me again. I'm playing with you. <laughs> but I'm not going to allow you to eat me another time. I mean, I will grab your hand and I will do something with you. But I, 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 I may not hit you because it's forbidden for me by God to hit any man ever again in my life. But I can wrestle. I don't have to hit a person. I can wrestle him. I mean, and just calm him down a little bit. I mean, that's a good thing. Teach your sons to wrestle. Give God a hand. From verse 1 again in the NIV. Yes. If any of you has a dispute with another, dare he take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Trivial cases, yes. Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more? The Do you know that I'm going to judge angels one day? Huh? If we judge, we're going to judge angels one day. Can't we judge among ourselves? If you've got a problem with your brother, come to church authority and ask for wisdom. And let the pastor and the church leaders judge. Amen? And it can be settled there in Jesus' name. Thank you. Go on. How much more than the things of this life? Therefore, if you have disputes about such matters, appoint as judges even men of little account in the church. I say this to shame you. Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute between believers? But instead, one brother goes to law against another, and this in front of unbelievers. The very fact that you have lawsuits among you means you have been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you yourselves cheat and do wrong and do this to your brothers. That's what I say. These are the words of Jesus. Give God a hand for the words of Jesus. Now, if you're a born-again Christian, you pray, but God doesn't answer your prayer. And you wonder, why doesn't he answer my prayer? But you've, took, you've taken your brother to court. You've taken your brother to court. Now, God doesn't answer your prayers because you've got open doors and the devil devastates you. You say, what did I do wrong? Peter said, Lord, how can we leave you? You've got the words of eternal life. Give God a hand for the words of eternal life. What you heard now, that portion of Scripture is the words of eternal life. If you want eternal life, eternal life is not going to heaven. Eternal life is a life that you live when you live by the words of Jesus. Whether you're here or one day go to heaven, you will also be there. But now, to safeguard you against all the evil around you, you live by the words of Jesus. Jesus said, and the, the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit says, through the prophet Isaiah, where the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Lord will raise a standard. That standard is the Holy Spirit. And the words of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit. You know, there's not an issue in life and a matter in life that will not be solved by the words of Jesus. God's got still many things to say, and he had something to say about every matter you can meet in life. Every issue you can face, you can go to your Bible. Your Bible will clearly tell you what should be done and what should not be done. Give God a hand. That's why God is the great judge. He is the worthy judge. Give God a hand for the worthy judge. Hallelujah. Amen. Rather be wronged. Rather be cheated. Don't go to court. Don't take your brother to court. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pray, Lord God of heaven. We thank you for your words that are eternal lives. That if we apply them, we will experience your eternal life, your abundance, and your great mercy which are new every morning. In Jesus' name, give God a hand for the words of Jesus.